to um, start recording this meeting. So welcome everyone. Uh, once again, I'm so sorry for the, the delay. And uh, my name is Heidi Roth and I'm a registered dietitian and health coach. And today our topic is preventing the quarantine 15. Uh, feel free to chat with me if you'd like and ask me some questions while I talk. I'll um, be happy to answer questions uh, during the presentation. And if there's too many, I'll just uh, save them till the end. So let's get started. Uh, so does anyone feel like this panda here that you're eating maybe 12 hours a day? Um, <laughs> I thought this was cute. This is the same as an adult at home under quarantine, which is why we call it a pandemic. I know, kind of corny, but um, anyways, <laughs> our agenda for class today is we're gonna talk about eating healthier, um, how to prep some foods, managing stress eating, and then also just wanted to touch on intermittent fasting and maybe some points for considering that as well. And let's get started. So. I would say out of anything that we can do, maybe one of the biggest things that we could do is to keep a food and exercise journal. And the reason why is that it really kind of keeps you honest. So uh, step number one would be to either on paper or online using something like MyFitnessPal or an app like that, write down as you go everything that you eat for the day, even bites. And even if you just do it for a day or two, it can really kind of be very telling in terms of what we're eating, when, how much. So many times we just pop things in our mouth and we don't even really think about it. Um, I know I'm, I'm totally guilty of that. So a food journal just makes you think twice about popping something in your mouth. And then it makes you think twice too, like, oh, do I really wanna go through the, the work of, of writing this down? Oh, not really. Okay, so, um, you know, not, not, not gonna bother with this. So number two would be to choose a healthy plate. Um, I don't think it's a surprise to any of us that these whole real foods are things that not only keep us healthy, but when we're looking to manage our weight, these type of foods provide the antioxidants to decrease inflammation, to manage our blood sugar levels, to help us to maintain our, our metabolic rate and to be metabolically healthy. Um, so what, choosing these, these foods, these whole real natural foods, um, whether we're plant-based or whether we do include some fish or chicken or um, sustainably raised meat, that we're always choosing those over processed foods. This is the Harvard Medical School Healthy Eating Plate. And when it first came out, I used to joke that it was gonna put me out of business because it was so simple and easy just to really see what we should be eating. And filling half of our plate with fruits and vegetables is step number one. Now you'll, you'll notice that there's a lot more vegetables and fruits and the reason why is that vegetables are low calorie. So 25 calories per serving um, versus fruits that are a little bit higher in sugar. So kind of, you know, a lot heavier on the vegetables than the fruits. Uh, healthy oils, I would say probably the healthiest oil that we can focus on is olive oil because it has all these anti-inflammatory properties to it. Um, it actually contains something called oleocanthin, which is, um, you know, to some extent you could say it's very similar to uh, ibuprofen almost in that it does de help decrease inflammation. Now, obviously if we hurt our knee while hiking or something like that, we're not gonna wanna glug a gallon of olive oil, but a little bit of olive oil every day can work the same way to some extent that I'm taking an ibuprofen every day would in terms of decreasing inflammation. Uh, someone here asked, is coconut oil healthy? Um, I, you know, coconut oil has this kind of reputation of, you know, maybe the, the super food and all of a sudden this super, super, super healthy oil. I would say that it is um, it, ha it does have some benefits in that it's very shelf stable. It's not likely to get oxidized like a lot of oils might. Um, it doesn't go rancid. Um, however, it can increase cholesterol levels. So it, it increases your good cholesterol levels, but also your bad cholesterol levels. So I would say use it in moderation. Um, if you have high cholesterol levels, probably would want to focus more on a, on a more 
a heart healthy oil like olive oil. I do use coconut oil here and there, but it's not my primary cooking oil. Uh, then also you'll see whole grains, healthy protein. I like the fact that they said protein, they didn't say meat. So if you're plant-based, there's lots of great um, ways to add in some, some healthy plant-based protein. And then lastly, they put water here. They didn't put dairy. Uh, certainly include dairy if you like it and, it and it's well tolerated. The best form of dairy is really a fermented dairy. So something like um, yogurt or kefir um, is, is better than just plain milk. Uh, so we're more likely to do things when it's convenient when things have an element of beauty and fun and when it's kind of normal, when the default is to eat healthy, right? I've just showed you all the things that you should be eating. We talked about it, but if you don't have those things in your house and it's kind of a pain to make all those things and, and to do it, um, chances are, you know, we're not gonna do it. So how do we make the healthy eating the, the default eating, right? Super convenient and normal. And one of the ways that we can do that is with some food prep. And food prep is this concept of, you know, it's just as easy to make, you know, enough for a couple meals or a couple snacks as it is to make one snack. And so if you're cutting up, you know, uh, some vegetables to roast, why not make some for, for the week? And so with that, you know, when we talk about eating some healthy proteins, you know, can we cook a big pot of beans? Um, I have some garbanzo beans soaking right now on my, on my countertop. I'm gonna throw them out of my instant pot. Um, I'll make some hummus with them. I'll roast them and do all kinds of stuff with them. So prepping them in advance and doing a big batch at once, I'm more likely to eat them. Um, most fish probably really isn't good prepped in advance. The, the one I, I would say there's would be salmon. Salmon, you can um, bake some salmon in advance. Um, and then you can have it during the week on top of salads. You can have some rice with it. Um, some other proteins that you might want to maybe prep ahead would maybe, maybe be making a big batch of hard boiled eggs. Um, once again, if you have an instant pot, it's really easy to make a couple. And then when you're looking for a snack, you want a little bit of protein, um, you can do that. Also baked tofu is quite delicious too. So you buy the extra firm tofu, just kind of blot it off, cut it into chunks, and then um, you can mix it with a little bit of cornstarch if you want, some spices, and, and throw it in um, the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes or so. Um, how long do hard-boiled eggs last in the fridge? Hard-boiled eggs don't last quite as long as fresh eggs, but they will last a good two weeks. So that's nice. Um, so that, um, <clears throat> you know, is, is one nice thing. Keeping in mind that things like, you know, shrimp and salmon, you don't want to make enough for like seven days. Make for the next two to three days. They don't last as long. Ground meat, even when cooked, is not going to last as long. Um, chicken will last a couple days. Tofu will last a couple days too. Um, another thing would be to cook some grains and starches. Barley takes a while to cook, but if you cook a big batch of it, I sometimes put my extra barley in a baggie in the freezer. Um, wild rice, botanically speaking, isn't a rice, but it, it's also very healthy. Some roasted sweet potatoes, soba noodles, these are all your starches you can prep in advance. And then of course, veggies, lots of veggies. Um, I like to make kale salads in advance. So I just take some kale, some extra virgin olive oil, uh, lemon juice, vinegar, mix it all together. And then you can do several things with that kale salad. Roast a big batch of veggies, steam some broccoli, saute some spinach. Um, beets, one of the, one of the um, kind of pre-prepped items that's really convenient is to buy your beets cooked already. If you ever, ever belong to a CSA, um, you'll, you know, you get these beets that have the tops on them and you have to remember to roast them. So already buying them cooked is really nice. 
I even microwave vegetables sometimes. I'll just take some mushrooms, onions, peppers, broccoli, throw it in the microwave real quick with a little tiny bit of water, and then I'll use it to top pizza, I'll stir in with my eggs in the morning. So when I have these veggies already kind of prepped and ready to go, I can just throw them on top of salads, throw them you know, with my eggs in the morning and it makes it much easier. Um, maybe you have some sauces that you, you know, use along with different things. Um, I like the Thai peanut sauce is delicious. Um, things like chimichurri is an herb sauce. Um, maybe you can make some vet uh, dressings. I, I make vinaigrettes and I keep them in the fridge. So then I could, they're ready to go to put on top of salads, to drizzle on top of roasted vegetables. Um, this is right down here at the bottom. This is a, a tzatziki sauce, which is basically yogurt, um, grated um, cucumbers, some lemon juice, salt and pepper, it's, it's delicious. Uh, some other things that you can maybe prep, have on hand to maybe make some nice bowls, something pickled like kimchi or sauerkraut. These also are very beneficial for your gut bacteria. Um, some chopped nuts, a sprinkle of cheese. And so then putting it all together. You know, I like to sometimes make little mini breakfast frittatas for breakfast. Um, you can make a big batch of steel cut oats and keep, um, steel cut oats actually freeze very well. Um, baked oatmeal is basically, it's a recipe where you take some eggs and you mix it with oatmeal and some fruit. Um, frozen smoothie packs, I don't know if anyone's ever done these, but you know, I just put some frozen spinach in a bag. I put some apples, a piece of ginger, everything that I want in my morning smoothie, and then I'll throw it in the freezer dump it in and then all you need to do is add some soy milk, add some almond milk, um, and it makes it convenient. Uh, so putting it all together, you know, that kale salad, you could do a breakfast salad with it. Um, just, you know, put one of your hard boiled eggs on top and call it breakfast. You could make a grain bowl, add, you know, one of your grains, add, you know, uh, some protein to it. Uh, kale quesadillas are really delicious if you never had it. You, you basically take your fresh kale salad, you don't cook the kale, and you put it on a quesadilla and it's, it's really quite delicious. Um, here's just, you know, another picture um, of everything put together. You've got your grain, you've got some of your sauces, your pickles, and then you make a couple of these and you can just pull it out really quickly and have it for lunch. Um, so some great ways to add, just add in vegetables wherever you can, blend it into smoothies. Um, you know, chop up some mushrooms. Last night I made tacos and <laughs> my teenage son wasn't too happy about this. I try to be sneaky, but every once in a while he catches me. Um, but I snuck in some diced mushrooms into the taco meat because it just makes it a lot healthier, right? Starting the day off right with an omelet with some vegetables in it, as we had mentioned before. And then of course, adding in some healthy fats, they help to increase its satiety. They um, you know, definitely can be, can be beneficial, things like avocados, olive oil, nuts and seeds. You can use a small amount of butter, but I would recommend using a grass-fed only butter. Um, and then try not to eat any fried foods. The other thing is that when we talk about managing our weight is cutting back. Americans tend to eat a lot of pro processed foods. And so this is the standard American diet. And as you can see, you know, there's not much here that provides nutrients for us. Everything here is highly, highly processed. Um, even the orange juice, which you could argue maybe is, is a little bit healthier, but that amount of orange juice is going to have a ton of sugar and not really going to be the best thing for our blood sugar levels. Um, this was an interesting study. And in this study, it really just showed that people um, they put people in the lab, so they weren't eating at home. They really closely monitored what they ate. And what they did was they, they let people eat either an ultra-processed diet with really highly processed food or unprocessed foods, like that first slide I showed you with all the fresh fruits and vegetables, salmon. Um, they were offered the same amounts of calories, same amounts of fat and protein. And what they found was that the people that ate the ultra-processed food ate on average about 500 calories more per day than the people that were eating the unprocessed food. Likewise, what it showed too was that that ultra-processed food um, 
they, they really gained a lot more um, weight too. They gained about two pounds extra. So also too, one of the things that we talk about when we talk about eating the right amount is enjoying your food, but eating less. Um, is anyone stressed eating here? I don't know. I, I know many of us are, right? And it's, it's a common thing to be doing nowadays. We have lots of reasons to maybe be stress eating at this time. Uh, so cons considering that, um, you know, you, you be, be, be aware of when you're doing it. Some of the things that we can do is having some compassion for ourselves. We are in the middle of a pandemic still, right? Um, we have lots of reasons to be stressed. So, you know, try not to stress about too much about the stress eating, but make it harder to do. Those foods that might be, um, you know, really tempting for you, put them up higher, put them out of the way um, so that you can't get them. Make healthy food the default. Make it normal, make it convenient, do some food prep. And recognize when you're doing it. Say, how is this habit serving me? Okay, I'm totally feeling stressed right now. I'm in the kitchen, I'm stuffing chocolate in. Okay, I'm recognizing that, that I'm doing that. Let me just mindfully eat this chocolate right now and, and understand that, um, that I do have reasons to be stressed, but I'm gonna go do something else because in the long run, I feel better right now, but in the long run, I'm going not, to, not going to feel better. Um, sometimes when my kids want to tease me and you know I see them eating something maybe a little bit less mindfully than I think they should, they tell me this quote from mall cop they'll say mom it's just helping to fill the cracks in my heart and i'm like no <laughs> don't use food to fill the cracks in your heart so if any of you have seen the movie mall cop it's a really cute movie and um uh you know trying to recognize when we're using food to maybe fill the cracks in our heart can we do uh, something else instead a, a better habit um one thing to think about too is to maybe think about this concept of time restricted eating. You know, one of the problems with stress eating is that we're home all day and we have access to food all day long. We get up, we eat breakfast in the morning and we eat all the way through until like 12 o'clock at night, right before we go to bed. And so there's, I've, I've been working with people that have had really a lot of success with this intermittent fasting or time restricted eating. And with this thing is that you're changing the eating patterns, not necessarily what you eat, but when you eat. Of course, you know, you wanna always choose healthy food as the default, but there, it's not a crazy diet. It's not watching your calories all day long. It kind of falls into that category of simple enough that you can do it, but meaningful enough to make a difference. So what does, what does that, what does that mean? Um, so what it means is that, you know, as I had mentioned, we're eating maybe 16 hours a day, maybe even more than that. And so kind of scaling it back the times that when we eat, you know, it used to be in the 1950s, people ate breakfast at 8 a.m., they ate lunch, and then they ate dinner at 6 p.m. And then that was it for the day. And they kind of effortlessly maintained their weight. And so kind of thinking about this as kind of the baseline of the way that we should be eating. And, you know, it doesn't require a lot of work. What it requires is really just making sure that you're cutting off when you eat and not constantly eating throughout the day. There's some other ways that you can do it too. Some people take it a little bit further and they do something called the 16-8 method. And they, so they, they, fast for 16 hours a day and then they feed for eight hours of the day. Now when I say feed, I guess what I should say, that's kind of your eating window, right? You don't want to be eating constantly for eight hours. Um, so you eat two meals during this time, snacking is kind of discouraged. Um, but these, these types of ways of, of eating can be really beneficial for people to help, um, you know, maintain their blood sugar levels kind of to some extent, effortless, effortlessly watch their weight. One of the things that I do occasionally is the 24 hour fast. So um, I skip dinner one day and then I don't eat anything until the next dinner. And um, it can be a long fast. 
Um, sometimes what I do is I just, you know, have a really, really early dinner. So I might not have anything after six o'clock and then I don't eat anything until six o'clock the next night. Um, but for me, it's just kind of an easy, easy way to, okay, I need to rein in, watch my weight. Um, I'm, you know, one day a week, I'm really going to watch what I eat. So when, when you're not fasting, when you're actually eating, making sure that you're eating those whole real foods that we talked about, that you're eating healthy fats and you don't need to count calories during that eating window. Um, in fact, don't restrict your calories. You don't wanna slow down your metabolism, but eat each meal within a 90 minute window. So as I had mentioned, not that you're like, oh wow, it's time for, um, <laughs> it's time for me to eat. And, um, you know, I'm just going to eat eight for eight hours. Um, so while you're fasting, making sure that you actually are fasting and you don't eat anything, no fruit, no yogurt, no nuts, you know, these are all healthy foods. But during the fast, what you're really trying to do is not increase your insulin levels. Insulin is a, at the end of the day, it's a storage hormone. And if we can decrease our insulin level, the concept is, is that we can um, decrease some of that fat storage. You can drink water, sparkling water, coffee, green tea, but no diet sodas, no artificial sweet sweeteners during this time. Now, as I, you know, maybe I should have started by saying this is that if you're doing something like a 24 hour fast and you have some health issues or you're on any type of medication, always, always wanna to talk to your doctor first. Um, it's really especially critical, obviously, if you're diabetic. Um, paradoxically, in the short term, your blood sugar may actually raise while you're fasting as your liver releases some of that stored sugar. Not for everyone, but the, the more of a concern is if you are on any sort of diabetic medication that you would have, get, that your blood sugars would get too low. So um, always, you know, the default is if, if you're starting any type of new diet, it's always good to talk to your doctor um, before, before you do that. Um, and so somebody here asked, doesn't fasting raise havoc with your blood sugar? Um, so what happens is that we have a lot of sugar stored in our liver, we have sugar stored in our muscles, and your body first uses that sugar. And then what happens is that once your body has used all the sugar that's stored up in your liver and in your muscles, um, then it turns to fat and it, um, you know, can make it's, it's a little bit more work, but it can actually make some blood sugar out of fat. Um, but um, it, you, know, you wanna start slow if you have any, any issues with blood sugar levels. So putting your plan into place. So we talked a lot, I talked a lot about, you know, a lot of things in a very short amount of time. <clears throat> but all the things that I talked about, if you don't have a plan to do anything, you know, you'll leave here, maybe you've learned a couple new things and maybe <clears throat> most of it was a reminder for you. But I would say, can you pick one or two things that we talked about today and can you put it into place? How will you add in a healthy food? How will you make it convenient for yourself? When we talk about changing habits, you know, many times we get the most bang for your buck when you make these big, huge changes at one time, but it's not sustainable because you always kind of think to yourself, oh, I don't have to continue this for the rest of my life, right? I'm gonna lose a couple pounds and I can't wait to go back and eat what I was eating before. And so research has really shown that it's much better to start small, to put a small little habit into place, and then you incrementally build on those habits as well. So making it easy for yourself to do. So what are some things that you could try this week? Um, you could try the intermittent fasting and maybe you don't do the 24 hour fast or the 16, eight, but maybe you just try to cut off not eating anything after six o'clock PM and do that for a week. And how does that work? How does that work for you? Um, you could try to cut out added sugar. So really, you know, in an ideal world, we would not be eating, you know, any more than 25 grams of added sugar per day for, for women and no more than 36 grams of added sugar day per day for men. So, you know, reading your, your food labels and how much added sugar did they add and making sure that you're really monitoring that. Um, maybe you just watch your portion sizes. 
Um, maybe you even start super small and you only watch your portion sizes at dinner, you know, whatever works for you. Um, maybe for this week, you try to get 10,000 steps per day. And you really can't, you know, check off that box every day in your calendar. Okay, I got 10,000, I got 10,000. Um, how many servings of vegetables are you having per day? I found that many people maybe are only having one or two servings of vegetables per day. So you start where you are. So if you're only having one or two, can you have four? Um, another thing to maybe try this week would be to have a savory breakfast. You know, can you have a breakfast salad? Um, can you have a, um, some greens with your eggs? Can you, um, you know, microwave some vegetables and stir fry them with, the, with your eggs in the morning? Um, a daily green smoothie. So one, one of the nice things with green smoothies is that you're getting a, a large amount of greens sometimes early in the morning. You know, most of American breakfasts are really not all, all that healthy. We have things that tend to raise up our blood sugar levels a lot. Um, we have things like toast or bagels or instant oatmeal. And while oatmeal is healthy, instant oatmeal can really raise up our blood sugar levels quickly. So we wanna really, you know, try to incorporate maybe some more vegetables in in the morning. Um, another thing that we could try would be maybe no flour. I'm not going to eat anything made with flour this week. So whole wheat flour, even though, you know, whole wheat flour is much healthier than white flour, whole wheat flour will raise up your blood sugar levels just almost as much as something made with white flour. So if you're getting, you know, a whole wheat bread and we think, oh, I'm doing a great job because I'm eating, you know, whole wheat. Yes, a little bit better than just the white flour, but at the end of the day, it's still raising up our blood sugar levels. So if you are eating, you know, if you do like bread, having a bread, something like Ezekiel bread, Ezekiel bread is what they call a flourless bread. It's just whole grains, it's some, um, I believe some lentils, and it's, it helps to keep your blood sugar levels nice and steady. Uh, one of the things that you could do too would be maybe to commit to having one meal prep every day. So, Maybe you commit to, I'm going to make myself lunch every day. And um, you know, you, you get your little containers out, your glass containers with the plastic lid. If you're going to food prep, you really don't wanna use plastic because when, if you're going to reheat it, if it's just for a salad, that's fine. But um, you don't wanna throw plastic in the microwave because some of those chemicals in the plastic can leach onto your foods. So I know people like to get those takeout containers, like you get Chinese food in, those little black containers, you know, with a plastic lid. And then they say, oh, great, these are cheap, they're free. Um, I'm just gonna do my meal prep in this and throw it back in the microwave. It's really not, you know, the better way to do it would be to, you know, order some of those little glass containers on Amazon. They're not that expensive. I think they're like $29 for like this big box of them um, and much better way to do it. Um, maybe you commit to making like a mason jar salad every day. Um, and then lastly, maybe one of the things that you could commit to would be to a, a serving of fermented food every day. So something like kefir or kimchi or sauerkraut or yogurt, all of these things are beneficial for your gut bacteria and our gut bacteria you know really research is really showing that it has a big potentially might have a big impact on our weight and if we have the wrong type of gut bacteria we're more likely to overeat more likely to be anxious more likely to be overweight so paying attention to making sure that we're feeding our gut bacteria the best things possible um, all right, so that is actually the end of our presentation and I did leave time for questions. Um, I see someone here said, I make overnight oats with rolled oats, is that healthy? And yes, absolutely, rolled oats are definitely healthy. The best would be steel cut oats, you know, so they're at the top of the list here um, because they have what's called a low glycemic index. They don't raise up your blood sugar levels very much. Rolled, rolled oats are next. So whether you cook them or have them raw, also very healthy. And rolled oats or any type of oats contain something called beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are a long chain 
polysaccharide or basically long chain carbohydrate that um, can boost our immune function. So that's you know definitely a plus for, for oats there. Um, but really, as I had mentioned before, try as much as possible to stay away from the instant oats. For many people, it can cause hypoglycemia, meaning that you eat these instant oats, your blood sugar goes up and then comes crashing down. Um, and then your blood sugar is actually lower than when you even started. So, and it never really feels good to have lo low blood sugar. Um, so yes, rolled oats would, would definitely be a great healthy thing to do. Um, and overnight oats are nice and convenient and, and simple. Um, so I am going to um, share the slides of this. Um, so once again, I apologize for the glitch in starting early. Um, I'm, I really apologize that you've had to wait to get in. And we'll, we'll share the slides and you can also watch the recording. Um, so Lisa, maybe you can tell me how, um, how you can um, watch the recording of the presentation. I don't, I'm not sure if that will be sent out to everyone who registered um, or, or how that will be done. Okay, so somebody here said too, I know you said to stay away from sugary drinks. Would it make it, be, would it, make it better to add water to the drinks? Um, always, right? So I, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have, and you wouldn't drink any type of juice. You would have all of your sugar coming from the whole package of fruit. But let's say you've been having juice every day, every morning for the last 20 years, and that's just what you do. Um, so if that's the case, then yes, a great way to do it is by starting to add some water to it. So instead of eight ounces of juice, it's now four ounces of juice with four ounces of water. And you kind of wean yourself and make it a little bit more watery, more watery. Um, and until you get to the point where you're basically drinking water with maybe like a splash of juice, just to give maybe your water a little bit of flavor to it. So um, always much better. So. Lisa just uh, posted the information to everyone. It's going to be posted to Tufts Health Plan YouTube channel um, and to the COVID-19 page. And so um, I think she's going to maybe post the links. Uh, somebody else asked, um, what about crystal light? Crystal light contains artificial sugar. So not really the best um, choice as much as possible. Re research is really showing that even potentially artificial sugars might potentially have a negative effect on our weight and also um, our blood sugar levels. So that would also be something that I would recommend weaning yourself off of. Um, if you want like a drink enhancer, I would say just adding a little bit of lemon juice a uh, little bit of lime juice, um, you know, maybe you can cut, what I do is I cut up some pieces of fruit. Sometimes I'll cut a little bit of watermelon or some strawberries, I'll throw it into my water. I'll drink like a flavored type of green tea, um, which would, which also is good. Um, so somebody else here also asked and said, I thought fasting would slow your metabolism. Um, so this is a common misconception as well. And research has really shown that when, you know, people have fasted all throughout history, whether it was for spiritual reasons or for political reasons, or just, you know, no access to food, our bodies are actually built much better built to handle fasting than, than we really realize. Um, because we're used to eating all day long, 16 hours a day. So, um, you know, research has shown that our metabolism doesn't really slow down until about after 48, 48, um, 72 hours of fasting. But until then, um, it, it doesn't. So, um, and you know, with that intermittent fasting, see if it works for you. It doesn't work for everybody. Uh, perhaps might work better for men than for women, but you know, when you're looking to try something new and different things work for different peoples, different people, it, it, it can be very helpful for, for many people. Uh, so Lisa just posted the link for the, for the YouTube um, channel and please allow up for one week for the, web, for the webinar to be posted. So, um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining everyone. I see people are starting to sign off here. 
So I appreciate it um, and um, try something new. Hopefully you, you were able to take something away and um, you can pick one new thing to try this week and then build upon that. So I appreciate everyone for joining me here today and uh, we'll see you all. Bye-bye.